if you want to see if the new CryoGrip Pro Glacier build plate from Bichu is something that you should add to your 3D printing arsenal, then stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So not too long ago, uh, Bichu sent me this uh, CryoGrip Pro Gl Glacier plate um, kind of out of the blue, and I thought, hey, why not give it a test? Because I keep seeing, uh, especially in the Bamboo forums, because that's the main printers that I'm using um, when I'm not using those Prusas back there. Actually, I use them all pretty much equally. Anyway, um, I thought, hey, let me give this a test. So I thought, you know, let me do some kind of torture testing on this because most of what I do does not require super adhesion. It's kind of either working or it doesn't. So anyway, this is kind of your little intro here. Um, we're going to talk about the features. We'll go through the demo. I'll list out the pros and cons, and then uh, we'll do the final rating. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So let's talk about the features first. So they give you this little card. I mean, it comes packaged. It's pretty nice. They give you little stickers here. So if you have the X1 carbon, then they give you the little QR code stickers. And there's a spot right here on the front of the plate that you can put the sticker. I have a P1S and an A1. So these don't I mean anything to me. Uh, but some of the features here. So this is the Glacier. Um, hopefully, hey, beat you if you're out there watching this. Send me the frostbite because I print more with uh, PLA and PETG. But uh, anyway, so some of the features of this, it's got a smoother texture than the uh, frostbite. And uh, I'll show you some close-ups of the texture that we get out of this versus these other plates that I used. Um, so it says that it excels with most engineering materials with good printing adhesion, but not as good as frostbite with PLA and PETG. So your PLA temperatures are from 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, PETG from 60 to 75. So those are the recommended temperature ranges that they get. Compatible with all models, or, or excuse me, compatible with all materials with nozzle temperatures below 300 degrees C. And uh, it says it excels at engineering materials like PA. Uh, you can print PLA, PETG, ABS, PA, and other engineering materials. And it's an all around good plate. Uh, and then it does say that it may require some brim may require brim for some parts and uh, this one you can clean with both water and soap or alcohol um, and then one of the last features they call this a heat isolating handle so it's got these little honeycomb cutouts here so they say that the front of this plate is actually cool to the touch um, so even if you've got your bed at like 100 degrees c this uh, edge should maintain some uh, coolness so you can get it off but anyway, let's get into the demo, and uh, I'll just give you a little preview. First, I printed these little coin holders. This was just something I was testing out, so I printed one on each of the three beds here. So we're kind of going head-to-head, -head, and I've got the Bamboo Texture PEI plate. That's what I use most of the time. And then I also have, um, this is also a Bichu PLA ABS PETG. This is their PEI textured plate. And then, of course, we have the Cryo Grip Pro Glacier. So I printed those on each three. I'll throw the little, uh, I think I have some video or time lapse in here while I'm talking about it. But um, nothing much to say. The, for little parts like this, even though there's not a whole lot of uh, bottom, um, I had no issues printing any parts like this on any of these three plates. So um, not a huge you know, plus or minus for the plate there. Then I decided to do the torture test. So... Again, I'll uh, put some video in here and some time lapse. And as you're watching this uh, first time lapse here, you can see that there's all sorts of different patterns, um, including uh, you know this one. Some very small little details. None of them had any problems. It was really these three towers where you saw uh, where I saw problems. And for the most part. Um, I only had one plate, I think, that uh, successfully completed that initially. And uh, so we'll take a look at that. Now, here we have the result after increasing the temperature. I did a second run at 45 degrees C and had pretty much the same results as at 35 degree. But this one here was done at 55 degrees C for the plate. So that is still, I think, 10 degrees cooler than uh, what the uh, other two plates were run. And you can see we have a successful result. These stood up to the... Uh, entire run 
and now the plate has cooled so they're popping right off but uh everything looks great and uh, it worked very well now after i'd run through both of the uh, the bamboo and the uh, bichu uh textured plates here these gold plates um you know i didn't want to keep printing the same pro parts that i didn't have problems with so i went to just printing uh the three towers here and i got to the point you know just for giggles i wanted to make sure that uh it i was doing a fair comparison and this is the last one that i ran on the uh, bamboo pei plate and you can see uh this part printed mostly okay but one of the towers fell and so you started getting all this little filaments uh still left on it but uh none of them completed completely successfully uh except for the cryo grip pro glacier and i will caveat that with a, a little bit here so um you can see most of the time i was doing the time lapse and obviously the the tool head goes over to the side so that you uh, have a you know basically a clear field and a consistent uh, image capture and I think that was inducing some of the problems because it would go over to the side and that allows these parts you know to cool and then it's got to come back and start printing again instead of just continually printing um, but it was finally when I uh, I think the last one I did was at uh, 75 on this uh, 70 or 75 degree C and once I did that uh, without the time lapse, then this plate finished the torture test. And you can see the, the pieces are still standing here, but uh, we give it a little bendy there. Every part has come off of this plate, no problem at all. So no issues removing things from the cryo grip. All right, let's talk about pros and cons. So starting with the pros, um, the first one is price. Uh, this is a very competitively priced item. So even if you're not necessarily needing something that prints cool, and I'll talk about that a, a little bit here uh, in a bit, um, the price is pretty great. So BQ sells this or BQ sells this for $23.99. I, I added it to my card. I did the whole thing, got to the end before the ordering phase. $23.99, $5 shipping. So this sheet right here would be uh, $28.99 shipped to my house. Now, the bamboo plate, and remember, uh, build plates are expendables, so they don't last forever. Um, now, I know some of you will probably comment and say that, hey, I've had, you know, my plate for two years. I wash it or I don't wash it or whatever, and it's been perfect ever since. So, obviously, your mileage may, may vary, but uh, in general, these are consumable items. I've had to replace the build plates on my Prusas uh, a couple of times, and boy, those suckers are expensive. So I may be looking at some cryo grip plates. But anyway, the bamboo plate is currently on special. I think it's 15% off, but it is $32.29, $7 in shipping plus $2.95 tax makes this plate $42.24. So $42.24 for this one, $28.99 for the uh, cryo grip plate. Um, some other pros, this is a nice fine texture, so it is a finer texture than either of these. So if the, the bottom of your parts um, matters to you, then that might be a benefit. Um, it does have great adhesion, like I said, no problem. It's not like I, you know, I'm spending less money um, for this plate, even though they send it to me. But if I were to purchase this, um, I'm getting great adhesion for quite a bit less than the bamboo plate. And then... This is, you know, they, they tout this and obviously, again, your mileage may vary, but off lower power usage. So if you can run your machine at a lower heat, uh, the heat bed temperature, you're going to use a lot less electricity. The uh, heat bed is the major power draw of your 3D printer. So especially if you had multiple machines and you were able to lower the temperature, you know, like if you're running a print farm, this could result in a significant electricity cost savings um to you or however that works a better a higher cost savings not a lower cost savings a higher cost savings if you had many and you were able to do this now that really only applies to pla so again um the this is um actually we'll we'll kind of shift into the cons and i'm going to come back to the power savings so one con it's not magic it's not like you can just shut this down to zero degrees, save all the electricity, and it's just going to print magically and everything is going to stick to it and then pop off when you're done. 
Um, they do tell you at the bottom, they, this one has a grip strength index of eight for PLA and eight for PETG. They list that as good adhesion, it says brim not needed, but if your print is particularly hard to print, i.e. like these little towers, um, you use a brim to improve, if, uh, improve adhesion. If only odd corners are lifting, use mouse pads near the corner. So again, it's not magic. You may need to use a brim, um, which isn't the end of the world. So coming back to power savings, minimal power savings um, if you're using PETG. Now, like I said, I had to ramp this up to 75 degrees, 70 or 75 degrees. I think I normally print all the other plates at around 75 or 80 degrees. Um, if you're printing PLA, then you can drop it between 45 and 55 degrees. So if you primarily print with PLA, you could be looking at some power savings. But if you're using mostly PETG, then you're probably not going to drop um, power so much that you're going to see that electricity savings. But again, the price of this is pretty good. So overall rating, I'm going to give this four and a half directed tech gears. Uh, it is a great plate. You know, if it were magical, I'd probably give it five stars. Um, I did have to play around with the temperatures a little bit to find one that just worked uh, for this little torture test. But again, um, like I said, printing something this small at that diagonal, um, that puts additional stress onto it. So every time the print head touches the top of this, you're you're working against your adhesion. That's why this is a torture test. Um, so, you know, it's almost perfect. Not quite perfect, but four and a half gears is not bad at all. So do I recommend this? Absolutely. Would I recommend it if they hadn't sent it to me? Absolutely. For $28.99, it's probably half of what I spent on my um, Crucia plates. And I do believe I can buy these for my Crucia. So I think when I have to replace those plates back there, that's what I'll be looking at is a cryo grip plate so hopefully that fit the bill as far as a review that you were looking for um if i could have done something better or differently please don't hesitate to drop a, a comment below i always read all of the comments and i try to reply to all of them um it is 2025 the channel continues to grow and i appreciate uh everything that you bring to the channel and that we get to spend some time together talking about fun things like this. I've got some more exciting things coming up. I'm working on a project right now with the fiber laser. Um, but as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing here on the channel, please take a moment to hit that like button, hit the little notification bell, and please subscribe. We're over 2,000, maybe not quite 2,100 yet. We're getting close, but the channel continues to grow and that gives me more opportunities to work with more companies and to continue to bring you the content that you would like to see here on the channel. So once again, thank you so much for spending some time with me. And let's, uh, let's keep on learning, burning, and printing together. Take care, everyone.